we're having this meeting by Zoom, but with the select board in person in town hall. And we're trying out our new format here where people can call in remotely and it should look like a meeting to them, except you're going to see all three of us wonderful selectmen on one tiny Zoom window. Board. Select board member. Yes, yes, yes. We are no longer select men for select people. Select board members. Thank you. <laughs> right. Um, so the first item on our agenda is approval of the minutes from two weeks ago. Did everybody have a chance yeah, to see them? Very good. I'm used to looking at you guys on the Zoom window. I know. You know I, 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 don't, I don't know how to do it this way now. So, so as you can see, we're all nodding yes. So I make, I make a motion that we accept them. Yes. I'll second. And we have a second from Erica. Now, because no one's meeting remotely, Ross, one thing that we're going to talk about is the rules. And if somebody meets, if, if anyone is in meeting remotely, then we have to have a roll call vote. But do we have to have a roll call vote if nobody is remote? No. Everybody's here. You don't yep. need a roll okay. call. That's what I thought. Yeah. Good. Me too. That's what I thought. So, so we won't, we'll avoid the roll call and everyone can see all three of us saying yes. Uh, and we have uh, four warrants today. We have a vendor warrant for $279,577. No, $279,577.52. We have a payroll warrant for $145,000. $207.31. We have a payroll deduction warrant for $36,425.46. And we have an account payable warrant for $81,328.73. So I make a move that we accept those warrants. Could just ask, um, this is the first the first week in a long time when we haven't gotten these in advance. Yes. So I have. So none of us have had a chance to look at these. You want to postpone these for a week? Well, well they it, speak, need to go yeah, out. They need, they to, go need out. to go out. Yeah. Look at them tomorrow morning before they get dispersed. So, yeah, conditional approval. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, absent any untoured items. So I'll take that as a as yes. a motion, and I'll second yes. your motion. Yes. And everyone say aye. 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 Okay, great. So we'll all try to look at that tomorrow morning. Uh, meetings attended by select board members. The last. Oh, I was at a the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting, which, was, <laughs> which was actually quite fascinating. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I mean none of it was like it's it's all like open. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah so sure. um, so the. Uh, there was a the planning board had approved um, a permit for a cell tower to go in at some point on um, 116, um, and the company that was supposed to be putting it in hadn't actually done any of the due diligence that they were supposed to do before the deadline was up to have. I, can't, I think it was like sometime in February. So there was some question about whether we could extend that deadline based upon the fact that you know everything kind of went out the window with the pandemic, um, but. You know, Gary Fenton, he's great. He made some phone calls to some people much more knowledgeable about this process. Um, Ross was there as well, so that was <laughs> that was very helpful. Um, and in the end, we, I, I believe we decided to extend the deadline um, six months, I think, from, yeah, from June, whenever it normally would have been. Six months from the state deadline that would have been spot that, that was, it was a, what was the word that we used? There was a there was a word that told. That to, yeah, told. Yeah, so we did. so we decided to extend the deadline for them to actually do some real work and put honest effort in starting the project. Six months past the told date. To give you an estimate of how much work the zoning board of appeals does, that that meeting to give them their permit was the last zoning board of appeals meeting <laughs> and here we are uh, two years later probably at the end of their deadline when the, you have another one so they they are very rare uh but the very good news is that when i got to that meeting like three other people have volunteered to be on the zoning board of appeals great and apparently you either want to have five people on the board or three people on the board so you don't want to have four and you don't want to have more than five so it looks like i will just be the alternate 
member to show up at meetings with no regular members. You can imagine how often that will be. <laughs> exactly. So I'm willing, totally willing to do that. Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah, so I just had the one school committee meeting, Conway Grammar School committee meeting, Monday the 14th. And uh, so get the, the, the playground is officially squared away and under construction and all things are, all X's are crossed and T's are dotted. And um, so uh, that was it. That was, and, and, and they've started. It's kind of neat to see. Actually, you go there and you see the playground being built. You look up and you see work being done on the built on the, the highway buildings behind it. You see a new driveway marked out, and you think, "Wow, things are happening!" Wow, <laughs> great Conway, my Perfect. goodness. So we got a letter about about a piece of equipment that's been yes. picking up, picked up, but needs a new home. Yeah, that's, and I think I think it as might of, be on its way to a new home, but I'm not. As of last week, it was still in the playground. But this is a roughly four foot wide, six feet long, probably four foot high steel climbing structure that resembles a school bus, complete with two sets of rotating steering wheels, not enough coil springs that I believe are anchored on concrete. I guess it's surplus for the new design. So we're looking for somebody initially on town land that wants a little climbing structure. Like Parks and Rec, might they be? Yeah, but you're, you're talking about concrete footings and things like that. Yeah. So that's not, that's not, you know, that's, that's a serious endeavor. Well, to some extent. Yes, but I sent them a note. If they're interested, we can find a way to help them get the, the concrete done. It's just a piece of nice equipment that ought to go someplace. I'm sure there are residents who would like that, but we need to offer it to a town facility. Town field first. Yeah, but and we did also the school. We had a long conversation about sort of beginning to really c m better coordinate the uh, administration of schools with the administration of town and town hall, um, just in general. And so one of the first things that we saw from that was the sharing of legal advice from town count from school council to the towns, rather than the towns having to seek out the same advice from different attorneys. Um, since the school gets really high quality legal advice, in my opinion, um, and as as you saw from that little notice, that was that sort of laid it all out um, in in a way that we hadn't received that information before. So well, we kept. I mean, we got like I don't know two or three of those notices, and I at first I was like, what's that? Like, are we in trouble? Like, what did we? <laughs> why are they telling us? And what did we do? But then I realized that <laughs> they were just being very forthcoming with. Well, it's good things. to read it in a simple way. Yeah. yeah. But and I, and I hope to move that conversation towards equivalent job positions when, and uh, to, to the conversation towards equivalent job positions and job classifications for school and town and let's try to coordinate compensation for those positions a little bit better. And on that topic, the superintendent reached out today to the town administrators asking about talking about the Juneteenth holiday and how it will be handled in the future. So. I think that's a good conversation. That's all up in the air again now that it's a federal holiday? I think there's things to be resolved. I mean, how do you handle part-time and non-part-time and full-time? Yeah. You know, people who don't work weekends. And I think what he's going to... There's a lot of little detail on how to implement it that it makes sense. And the superintendent reached out to start the conversation with the other town administrators. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, so the, and the school, we did adopt a policy for Juneteenth. Um, that spelled out which employees are eligible for it, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, State sure of being a state law. In the federal house, but no, it's the federal. No, yeah. Well, no, it, it is now, but yeah, but when we, but when you did that, it was only a state holiday. Right. I don't know if that would change anything. But. But. I just mentioned in the sense that they are reaching out to coordinate things, which I think is a good sign. Yeah. So that was that. My meetings were all Conservation Commission related. Uh, we did a site visit at the tower. So we've got to talk with the guys that are putting in the tower. So, you know, I'm tempted to defend them. Y you know, there are real reasons why they got delayed, the pandemic, and they, they, they had told the town that they weren't going to begin building the tower until they had a vendor. And all of that got terribly slowed down with the pandemic. So they're now moving ahead 
the Conservation Commission and site planning and all of that stuff. Uh, and it's it's up there, up that hill, climbing up that hill. We went up the driveway to the house at the top of the hill and then hiked up and up and up and up. Uh -huh. it, it was in a rough place. Uh, but there's lots of building going on around town, lots of little projects. So it's great to see all the activity. New houses being built. Uh, okay. Uh, so next on our agenda is an update on the Bone Trails Woodland Partnership. So that was going to be Kimberly. I don't know if she's going to be here. She's on the Zoom. Yeah. Oh, I'm she's here. on Zoom. Kimberly, hello. You're I on. I can see you. I don't know if you can see me. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we can see you. Oh, okay. well, you're small and far away. <laughs> Not as small as we are. <laughs> yes. Yes. So nice to nice to see you all, um, and thank you for making a little bit of time for me on the um, agenda tonight. I just wanted to give you a quick wrap up of the. Um, the current MVP funded project it's ending June 30th and I wanted to um, remind you or encourage you to attend the last public information meeting that we are going to be holding on Wednesday at 7 via zoom and I think you got a flyer um, for the meeting in your packet and we're going to be talking about river corridor management options like the river corridor easement and um, ways that uh, other ways that the corridor can be managed. Um, I had some interesting conversations with uh, a group of folks both in Ashfield and Conway about the model river corridor protection overlay that we had developed, um, that the COG had developed uh, during our last project. And there were some really good conversations about, you know, what, what kind of overlap is there between managing or regulating the river corridor and what the Conservation Commission already does, for example, uh, under the Rivers Protection Act. Um, we also talked about the FEMA floodplain maps. So we're going to be fleshing some of that um, out at the meeting, the public meeting on Wednesday. And we're hoping to get, you know, a lot of good questions from folks that attend that meeting. I also recently shared the river corridor maps with um, the conservation commissions in both Ashfield and Conway. Um, the EMDs in both towns, the highway superintendents in both towns, and of course the Conway Open Space Committee has been involved, um, you know, with me on this work for a long time. The Open Space Committee in Ashfield, uh, really, they're not meeting on a regular basis. But there are, you know, ways to use these river corridor maps by other town boards uh, and departments. So. That was, um, you know, we had some good conversations there. The, you should have received um, the final appraisal reports for the, the three properties, uh, 69 Main Street, the Bay parcel, and the Waldo parcel, and the other um, related work that was done under the grant was the the legal review memo that I gave you um, it's been more than a month or so ago, as well as the professional title searches that were done and shared with the board. So if um, the next round of MVP grant funding is awarded, um, you'll be well positioned to, you know, pursue um, uh, acquisition options with that, you know, uh, work. Wait. Can I just ask you to slow down and just repeat that last sentence about the fee, the next step for grants is about the act. Could you just go into depth about the, the acquisition process and grants and what I'd never heard? No. Sure. Um, so, so as part of the um, MVP grant application that was submitted during this the round that just closed in May. Um, 
one of the one of the tasks or one of the budget items was uh, additional funding to help the town, um, you know, continue working on the the acquisition properties. So um, it's, the money could be used to potentially bridge a gap in the uh, price that is negotiated for the parcels. Um, it could also be used for if other legal work was needed. Um, so- Kimberly, you have a question from Janet. Could she, could she uh, ask you a question too? Um, sure, did I, did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. You know, we thought we were getting town meeting approval for the purchase prices but mm -hmm. your uh, uh, but if somehow uh, appraisals are redone or something or other, we could use some of this new money that we applied, the new MVP grant, to try to add to the purchase prices. I mean, my understanding originally was that <coughs> this next round is mostly for implementing remediation that we want to do on those properties. Yeah, it, most of the funding, Janet, is to do the um, environmental permitting and to do the, um, uh, you know, get it to the point where um, they can be built. But I did, you know, out of an abundance of caution, I just put in another uh, budget item for the land acquisition because I didn't want the town to be in a position where, you know, the negotiated price is, you know, $5,000 or whatever more than what the town meeting voted. And then that would, you know, be potentially a deal breaker for the town. So let's just say that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think we could then use that money to sub just without another town meeting vote, just to supplement? Yes. To, to, to fill that gap? Yes. Up to whatever amount, you know, I think there are constraints on how much a town can pay for a piece of property. Um, uh, isn't it 125% of the appraised value? Right, and we and you sent us that from some legal person that cities were limited, but towns weren't. Some strange. Right, uh, and I mean, you know, I don't want to speculate like too much because this is, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but I I did, like I said, out of an abundance of caution, I put in a budget item. Um, because we had plenty of potential match from the town, right? So all the numbers worked out. I didn't have to imp on um, the other, you know, permitting and work that is going to need to be done for the implementation projects. This was like a bonus. This was like the bonus fry in the bottom of your McDonald's bag. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to that. Kimberly, uh, coming right up, we're gonna we have an item on the agenda to to choose a, a team of people who are going to determine, you know, negotiate the, the for the land. And, and are you going to stay on for that? Are you? Um, what time is it on the agenda for? It's 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 probably less than ten minutes from now. We yeah, sure. Now. We could make we could make it next if you'd like, but. But I hope, but yeah, I can I can stay on. I have to go to the Ashfield meeting, but that's not until uh -oh. like seven thirty. So, um, so we'll be we'll be quick then. But am I missing something, Kimberly? Because the my understanding is at town meeting we passed authorization to purchase up to the appraised value of eighty thousand. Um, the seller is give me give me one hundred and eighty five thousand. So that's not like a little gap. That's like a giant canyon. Well, um, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I mean, and, yes, it's a giant canyon. Um, so you know, that's going to be part of the work, I would imagine, of the negotiating team. 
see if the, you know, a bridge can be built across the canyon um, or if it can be narrowed somehow. But again, I just wanted to, as best I could with the grant application, you know, maximize the flexibility that the town would have as part of the, the negotiation for the, for the parcels. And then the other thing that I just wanted to address with you, like, you know that in, at town meeting, we, we voted out of the uh, Community Preservation Act, the money for the 21E assessment mm -hmm. and for, for 69 Main Street. And I just wanted to sort of make sure that we go further down the path of bridging the canyon um, before we uh, spend that money on an assessment or on a, on a 21E. Oh yeah, things that we may that we may not end up. No, you you wouldn't try doing any assessments until you were all right closed and all right. Uh, Good, sorry. Like, maybe that seemed obvious to you, but not to me. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um. So the other uh, the other deliverables on the the grant um, include four. There were four priority culverts that were identified um, working with Trout Unlimited and Ron Sweet um, that were, the town will receive 30% designs for. These are the culverts that if they were to re be replaced at a future date, they are uh, subject to the mass stream crossing standards. One of the culverts over Johnny Bean Brook at Main Poland Road um, is going to go to 100% design, you know, the next MVP grant would um, help pay for the environmental permitting for that. And of course, we've talked about the Oxbow site, which is very complicated, but has some really great elements. And of course, um, the next MVP grant, if it's awarded, would... Um, the which site? The Oxbow the site. Culvert. Well, I talked about the Johnny Bean Brook culvert, Janet, yeah, right. um, and then what we're calling the Oxbow site. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, a, a final deliverable is the what we're calling the right sizing protocol for the, the drainage culverts that are in town. So as part of this current grant, um, FERCOG staff went out in the field and GPS, the location of all the drainage culverts and structures. And these are the structures that are not um, subject to the stream crossing standards, but they're important because to the resiliency of the road network, because they convey stormwater, you know, away from the road. So there's an ARC, it's called an ArcGIS map with all of that information um available and then what we're doing because of covid and we weren't able to do kind of the you know in-person outreach and workshops that we had originally planned we're creating what's called a story map i don't know if any any of you have seen those before they're really great they're interactive um they'll it'll it can be posted on the town website and it basically is going to chronicle the history of all the work that's been done as well as this you know this current project and kind of what's planned for the future so at your next meeting i should be able to um you know send the links to the story map as well as the um the culvert mapping if you're interested in that so is, is that layer the gis layer available on our town map or so um, after, so when I came to talk to the Conservation Commission and I went in to talk to Lee, we come about getting the river corridor GIS layer um, on your the town system. So we're working on that. I gave the information to Ryan Clary. The ARC GIS map and the story map should be able to be posted as links on the town website because they're actually like hosted in the cloud. So, so that they, wouldn't automatically get them on our town map. No, no. Yeah. But once so, the river port or GIS data layer is added to your town um, GIS program, you'll be able to see that. Great. Yeah. Okay. So 
Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you to um, everyone that's worked with me on the project. And I mean, as always, there's been you know a lot of a lot of behind the scenes work um, by a very dedicated group of um, volunteers. Um, in particular, Janet and Michelle and Joe, but many others have also worked with me on this project and over the years contributed a lot. And just wanted to say thank you to everyone for that. Oh, well, thank you. So um, I'll, stay on, I'll stay on for a little while if it's helpful. So, skip ahead to it and just do it right here. Yeah, uh, one, one quick question on this. Can you hear Janet okay? Can you hear me, Kimberly? Oh, yes, I can. Yep. Oh, okay. um, if uh, the 63 Main Street, uh, the, uh, 69 Main Street. Six, thank you. And the terms are not r reached. Uh, you know, and it is, it's not going to happen for $80,000, probably. Um, wh how does that affect our match for the grant that you just put in because you had, we had put in all those town meeting approvals as the town match for this so I wonder if there's you know you have a, have another strategy or you can come up with something right yeah I mean I could you know potentially um, you know maybe the town could apply for a FEMA grant or um, you know a 319 grant uh, the other thing I would do Two is advocate to the MVP program, um, you know, that we don't want to lose the match and that, you know, you, you could go back to, to like a special town meeting maybe and see if, if the town could, re, you know, authorize a different use of the funds. I don't know if that's possible for the, the source of the 69 fund. Um, you know, that might be something that the town wants to explore. What what are the options for using that money if it's not to buy 69 Main Street? And is is there some kind of deadline sort of on this? We don't have well, to have contributed our match by a certain date? Well, if got the, some yeah, if the grant is awarded, um, Janet, it would run um, till June 2024. So we would have time to figure out um, another source of match. So could you, the, the other grants, uh, what are those grants of which you speak? The, uh, what you said FEMA, you said section 319. Yes. What are those? So I mean, the, FEMA, all I know about FEMA is that if you apply for a FEMA grant and you're accepted, your children's children might see the money. Um, <laughs> right. right. Yeah, I know. Franklin County hasn't had good experience with the FEMA grants. Um, so <clears throat> that would be kind of a last resort. But the 319 grant program is the one that helped fund the South River Meadow work. That's it, um, a DEP program. <clears throat> you, you know about that? Yeah. That's what we used before to pay yeah. for. You know, and it's sort of got some of some of what they used to do now is done by called MVP, right? No, no, it's a complete it's a completely separate program, but there is overlap, Janet, like in terms of climate resiliency and and river health. Um, but the nice thing is that the 319 program is federal pass through money, so it counts as match for the MVP uh, grant, which is state funds. But I would, um, and maybe Joe knows, um, I would investigate whether or not the funds that were taken from that um, uh, or voted from that land uh, transfer fund, I can't remember the name of it, um, if it can be used for any other purpose, um, you know, related to the- so, uh, Joe would like to try to answer that. <laughs> I, can, I could try. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Um, that can be used primarily to purchase land. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, beyond that, I'm not sure that it can be used for anything other than you know, land conservation or things of that nature. It has to be spent on real estate, as I recall. Okay. So then, yeah, that might be, present a problem if it can't uh, be used for uh, 69 Main Street, then we would have to find another source of match. But the CPA money could be used. Right, the town could um, vote more CPA money, yeah? Well, or we voted 50,000 of CPA money. Right, but we've got that formula, right? So the, the amount of grant funding that's being asked for um, has to align with the match. So if we lose some of the match, you know, we could reduce the scope of work for the grant, right? So that we get that 75, 25% um, balance, or we could try to get um, another source of match to replace the, the funds that aren't available. But we'll cross that, you know, long bridge when we come to it. Like, I've, you know, I've already been thinking about what plan A, B, and C might be. So um, until we, until the town hears that they've been awarded um, the MVP grant, you know, there's not a whole lot we can do um, other than start negotiating with the landowners. So, Kimberly, you said you have to be off at 6.30, and it's after 6.30 now, so... 7.30. Oh, 7.30. Oh, is it 7.30? Yeah. Oh, great. Uh, uh, so, and I'm, I'm nervous about having a long discussion now about how to purchase the property and all the alternatives <laughs> when right. we're trying, trying to appoint a, a, a special group of people who will do that negotiation. This uh, is a special group, though. We are a very special group. This is a very special group. <laughs> yeah. So uh, my assumption is Janet and Joe are here to be members of that group, and we could have that discussion tonight. That's fine. We're going to have to appoint so them first. This we have to appoint them first. So, so why don't we go on on our agenda, and then we're, they're almost the very next item. Do you have any, any, any more, Kimberly? So, no, I don't. I'm all set. Thank you. Yeah. Any any questions or should we go on? Is that you, everyone good? I mean, do you want to you want to swap the, if you want to swap the order of the? We can yes. do that. Yes. So then I can yeah. not stay as long. Okay, good. So let's do. We'll do that. We'll swap the order, and so our next item on the agenda will be to appoint a negotiating uh, team to talk about how to acquire the land, the three parcels that we discussed at town meeting. So that was option number one. The second option was. Um, appoint the, the town administrator to assemble the negotiating team at his and or her discretion. That would be okay. That would be certainly well, that's a, a way to two options. That's yep. two options yeah. before us. My, my only comment would be whatever sure. you do, don't put a lot of government officials on the committee. <laughs> How about ex government officials? He, he hates government, you know. He will not negotiate with any government official, I don't believe. Oh. So my suggestion would be to consider assigning the task of negotiating a deal to the town administrator and let the town administrator pick who works with her, advises her on how to go with that. I think that gives them more ability to be nimble more ability to be less official. They will still have to bring back their recommendation for the select board to review, but it allows them to meet whenever they need to and to have discussions whenever they need to. Again, subject to your review at the end. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh, uh, so he, he is here. <laughs> I'm confused. I'm confused about the negotiations because we have appraised prices and that's what can be paid per town meeting. So this is, 
you know, yeah, there's maybe a little finesse of getting them to come to the table, but this is this is not negotiating, you know, salary contracts with big ranges or anything. So so that's just one thing I'm confused about. I mean, and another thing, whoever does this, the three buyers, the three owners, are, are in different circumstances. And we, the committee who did all this work and made this happen so far, um, have had different members, have had different contacts with each of them, and that's important knowledge to uh, to try to execute the sales. And so... Um, you know, if you start from zero with some of these, uh, <laughs> especially, you know, with the low prices, it's, you know, it's probably not going to happen, you know, may not happen. Well, my assumption is you would work with Verity when she becomes the town administrator. Well, sure, sure. Uh, I mean, you can ask, ask questions. Yeah. yeah. And, and, I mean, Evans is, you know, it's a different case in point, and Joe made a good suggest, uh, you know, um, so, yeah, he hates government. I mean, we learned that 20 years ago when we first, when, when me and two of the current selectmen went to see him, that, you know, that's true. Um, Andy Lovechuck, a member of the Open Space Committee, was there at town meeting, and Joe and I discussed a little bit at the last minute how maybe we we could have suggested uh, put in more than the eighty thousand. You limited you limited yourself with that um, uh, because there is some range. But anyway, Andy, Andy. At town meeting, did we specify that it was limited at the appraised value? Yes, you did, which you didn't need to do, and you know whatever could have gone up fifteen, twenty percent more, perhaps. Um, anyway, Andy did say he's a lawyer, was a successful practice, he's had for a long time, and he did offer to facilitate or try to negotiate that, you know, that sale. And the other two owners are, you know, there's small amounts and they're older people and they're different circumstances and there's emotional connection. These are all family camp land and so forth. So that's just what I wanted to share. Yeah. You know, and that. I think important because they have to be treated much more sensitively than Evans. There's still possibilities for creative negotiating, though, and easement on part of it versus sale and all that stuff. Yes. Now, a key thing seems to me there's one more one more piece is if the Concom is going to let them rebuild and build a big septic tank to support their his four four bedroom house or something. If the CONCOM supports... The CONCOM doesn't let people do things. The CONCOM enforces the law. Right. And so if you're asking, will the law permit them to do what they want to do, uh, Mr. Evans appealed the CONCOM ruling. Yes. And and the CONCOM and Mr. Evans have met with the DEP. Right. And the DEP has given him a list of things he needs to do. But in the end, if he does those things, he will be allowed to tell... The property as he would like to. And, and and does one of them, including putting that septic closer to the river? The septic that he's proposing will be is okay with the DEP. But it's in a different location. Uh, I I believe the tank is yes. So I think we're getting a little bit off topic on pointing someone to have right. it. Yeah. And I want to caution you not to get into negotiating strategy because that's something that would be done offline. But, but what happened with the appeal is public and, uh, and you know... Very relevant to the... And relevant. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So... We're so so. so I like the idea of turning this over to Veronique when she, you know, as she becomes a town administrator momentarily, and uh, and and you know, and she's here and she understands your role and Joe's role and all the work you've done, and will certainly look to you for your support. 
Whatever. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> well, <laughs> good luck to you. Okay, great. And that's okay with you, Bernie. Great. Do we need to make a motion about that? So, yeah, so, so. I would go. suggest that we add Michelle to that committee. She's worked pretty hard with us. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. Veronique, but but yeah. but Veronique, you, you you should be informing Veronique that Mer Michelle would like to be on it. She'll she'll choose, but I'm sure she will have on this team who, whoever you recommend. No, but right. or not. <laughs> yeah, or not. No, no, no. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion that we um, give the task of appointing the negotiating committee to our. Our incoming town administrator. So, or negotiating the sale. Negotiating with, 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 with the committee team. Yeah. So, I believe what you're doing is you're appointing the town administrator to negotiate the best deal for the town to purchase these three parcels. It's up to her to decide what assistance, advice, resources she wants to do that. I'll make that motion. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll second it. Okay. So, all in favor? Sure. Yeah, I think we're Hi. unanimous. Thank you. Um, I, I do have a question. If she agrees to put us on the committee, do we have to come back to you to get permission to negotiate, or does she have that authority? She, she has that authority. It. It sounds to me like it's not a committee. She she gets the authority, and she can call on or ask or whatever informally as as she needs to. Yes. So we don't have to be named to some committee, right? So we're all clear. Yeah. I think that's very well said. Um, Monique will have to bring back the deal for the select board to approve, but the negotiations are up to her with whatever resources she feels we can help her to do that. Okay, Joe. That's fine, yeah. I think that's okay. 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 Is that okay with everyone? Uh, yeah. yeah. So next item on our agenda. So we had town elections last week and uh, we are continuing to be the board of select people, uh, the members of the select board, and generally after we have done elections, we choose a new chairman of the select board. So, yeah, my proposal is I would nominate Bill. I would second that. So, it's, 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 you know, it's what I do wrong? <laughs> no, you did nothing wrong. I assure okay. you. All right. Sure. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So 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 we all say aye. This mm -hmm. is yep. I mean, this is really a motion. This is our little mini election here. So you want to swap seats, or we go where we are? Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Whatever. <laughs> no, but yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you. The meeting is here. Oh gosh. <laughs> um, okay. The next item on the agenda. Um, to uh, the topic of the boards and um, oh yeah yeah, the appointing the select board's representative for contract negotiations to the Union Thirty Eight and Frontier Teachers and IAs unions. As you know, it has been my curse, my great curse and dishonor to be the one that has had to do this for uh, the past eight years. Um, and I now, I've been the chair of those negotiating committees now for the past four years. And this, the last go around, as you well remember, Robert, was particularly torturous and um, distinctly unpleasant, like, but, but stretched over months and months and months, like the slow agony and, um, trying to talk someone else into it to them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, uh, like, there, there's not this, there, like, yeah, the, uh, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that, that we've turned a corner with our union negotiate, with our union relations, especially with our teachers union, just for the, just from the fact that 
the COVID thing went well um, uh, in general, that there was an element of trust between administration and faculty that is not, uh, that, that we became aware just does not exist in most institutions, especially when we compare to like Amherst and Northampton and East Hampton, the ones that we try to compare ourselves to. Um, we were in much better shape than all of them. And, and a lot of it was because there was a, a, a real relationship between the current administrators and the, the union, and it, a, a real foundation of trust. Um, and I, I feel like we sure have put the down payment on that foundation. And so I'm, I'm hopeful that this will go better, but, um, you know, we're, 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 and, and we're, we're going to get a, they want to get an earlier start on it. Are you willing um, to do this for another yeah, year? Yeah, but um, this this is it. Uh huh. I'm, I'm, uh, this is it. Somebody, I, and you know, it doesn't even have to be a select board it, member. It, it sounds like you've earned your like it, earned this it, does, it doesn't have to be a select board member. I found out we could appoint just like a random member of the public, and there is somebody here whose nickname is the Union Buster. Um, that he's a labor relations guy. Um, it works in Boston, and his specialty is busting up unions. And there were times in my depths of despair that I thought, boy, he'd be a good substitute for me right now. Um, but uh, but he wouldn't be a good substitute yeah. at all. Uh, yeah, no, no, that was a joke. Exactly. We're, not, we're, not, we're not doing that. And, uh, yeah. No. But um, uh, this, was, this is, and this is, you're going to be hearing about this for the next year because um, that's how long these process, just, just to schedule the meetings with four different unions just takes, just this, just that alone is unpleasant. So when, um, when is the next contract, like when is this contract? So we're, 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 we're concluding year two, year two is now concluded, okay. it's a three year contract. Okay, so. Um, and so you try to get it so that you're not without a contract mm -hmm. June 1st. Um, I think that's the deadline, but I could be wrong about that. So if Phil is willing to serve in this capacity for one more year, then I nominate Phil to be our representative, too. I would second that. Oh, me. man. Mandy's going to be upset. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. This, this was brutal on you last it, time. It sounds like yeah. this year should go a lot better. I hope so. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Okay, so that's me. So we do need to send a letter to uh, the ad the administration of, of schools letting them know that this has been... Did they send you a letter asking for? No, they they asked me on the four on the the meeting on the fourteenth to do this at the earliest convenience to have the nomination. Yeah, because they they want to start it. They want to start scheduling meetings. And who's it going to at Union Thirty Eight? Uh, the superintendent of schools. There it is. Yeah. So the next item is um, discussion and vote to allow board and committee members to participate remotely in our new post-pandemic world. So, so that's uh, moot, right, since the new guidance yeah. that was issued? The that we governor, the legislator moved extremely fast. Yes. The governor signed temporary legislation that negates this need because Last week when we wrote the agenda, we were basically back to pre-COVID requirements for open meeting law, which meant everybody had to be present unless you took this vote to allow it. The states beat us to it, so you can, it's entirely up to you how you want to run your meetings. And maybe you can suggest the other boards do what they want or follow your example. But the need to make this vote is no longer there because we're back to the way meetings were handled during COVID. Yeah. Um, well, there there was a few new twists to it, though. It was, I mean, that for for a board to be able to do it, pro in accordance with the new law, there was some extra stuff. The um, the chair needing to an announce who is remote uh, on the uh, record. I think those were. Existing requirements. Really? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Which, of course, the board followed to the letter, so there's no problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So we can table that. And, and we can, whatever you vote, I can summarize that for the, all the other boards. Um, I'm not sure that any action is required because it, it doesn't yeah. take the like board to allow remote meetings because yeah. the state has done that. If you want to set a 
suggestion that make people meet in person or that was that I, mean, I definitely um, pass along the letter from the school lawyer to every department head. That pretty much sets forth. What you well, do. we will be deciding how we're going to meet. So, you know, yeah, I mean, continuing I, to meet like this or going back this to is some, to me, or, this is infinitely more pleasant. I would absolutely than, prefer to meet in person. Uh, and just just the frustration <laughs> of Joe and and Kimberly. Just the, every other sentence, there was like one word that would drop out, and it's just it just this well. Gets, I was thinking the Zoom would continue for public's option to attend. There was a statement that we put actually in this week's agenda yep. that said the official appearance is in person. So if you have a technical problem, you better hustle down here because right, mm -hmm. right. Don't. But I think Zoom allows people to show up for just when they want to. Right. Yeah. I think it's a good outreach. Yeah, it is. And in the summertime, it's nice for people to be able to participate while they're on vacation on vacation like we like like I did last year that was lovely that was lovely phoning in from the beach for a zoom select board meeting um, uh, but so but yeah you know, oh well so you could do nothing on this topic or you can make suggestions or recommendations or or an edict of how meetings can be handled I would say that we allow all the other boards to meet the way they prefer, I think so. you know, that if they want to meet remotely or however, uh, but, but it would be good to inform them of what these rules are. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, yes. I know the conference commission, for example, people call into the conference commission, right. not the conference commission members, but people who the want public, to yeah. be part of a hearing for that day. And, and these rules ought to be followed. Uh, so uh, then I would make this package available for other boards. Yeah. Until we have multiple boards at the same time, we're all set for equipment. Maybe a better camera if you want, but great. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Next is the coronavirus Fiscal Recovery Fund application. Yes, please. Um, that's actually done. Good. Deadline. Um, that's your, that was in your town administrator update? That was? So that was in your update? Yeah. Yep. Um, I submitted a request for... Act reimbursement to the town for expenses the town experienced from January 1 to March 31st for $54,891. At that time, there was about $33,000 left in the allocation. We got about $169,000 allocated. So, this is just the first CARES Act, not ESSER 1, ESSER 2, uh, first one. Um, I believe the town has done a pretty good job at using up all of the available money, if not a little bit more. Um, Mike and I are meeting now to discuss just where that is and if there's a second round. Um, so if I can continue then. So the next thing is sort of the American Jobs Plan, which is part of the $4 trillion with a T dollar um, proposal that the Biden administration is proposing. Uh, Representative um, Fly? Fly. Fly contacted me and said, what does the town want? And I gave her essentially a wish list. Um, I suggested the town could use 120000 to install an elevator in this building or a LULA, limited use, limited access. Um, 100000 to potentially um, complete the purchase of the land in the center of town. That was a guess on, on what that number might be. Good and guess. I put in 344000 which was the highway department's initial request to pave um, the two-mile segment of Shelburne Falls Road, where he's 
gotten town approval for one instead of borrowing and to do the whole two miles Ron wanted to do. Right. Yeah. I figured it was a try, and I'd gotten feedback of this list from um, Alan Singer from the Finance Committee. But when someone's offering me, offering the town money, I started sort of looking for other things. I put a, a million dollars in to widen the South River Bridge underneath Main Street that's part of that flood control plan. I put 220000 in for the highway department truck that was approved at town meeting. I put in 120000 for the engineering. I guess there's a high dam that someone's talking about removing, yeah. potentially. Yeah. Is that yeah. the one at the end of the South River? That is the main, the main wildlife reduction uh, our, our, um, that we have. I put in a million dollars to remove that dam. Again, this was a swag. And here's one that will probably get a lot of eyebrows raised. I put in $9 million for a new municipal, municipal office and public safety center. That's a big number. Think big. It's good. <laughs> that somebody suggested might be the answer. I don't propose that these are projects. If you've got the money, you would do them. Today. But I can tell you, if you don't ask, you won't get them. And if you get engineering money, it may give you the facts that you and the public need yeah. to make these decisions. Uh -huh. um, in the past, I've answer these wish lists and I think it's a surprise when they come up with money. That's to Veronique and to you that you have your sort of pre-approved wish list because sometimes you'll get a phone call that says by Friday we need an answer to how the town would, would like some money and it would be good if there was a list that yeah, we had it. you we had folks it. had vetted and sort of met your wish plan versus <laughs> mine because that's so, a pretty good list. Yeah. But the, the way that this, these work, though, is that the first one or two of these, the CARES Act and I think ESSER one, that they gave that instead of giving any funding to the schools, they gave it to the town to take care of the schools. Whereas the last one or two, um, they gave it to the schools directly. So one of the things that I was trying to get um, clear on is sort of what's the total that is available from all of these and what's what's the school's wish list does the schools the, for the ones that we're that we're supposed to take care of the school on and what's the school what's the school have on their own and what's their wish list for the stuff on their own and Mike and I are trying to get handle on just everything that's out there that's available um, I know I have approved a number of invoices to reimburse the school from our CARES Act for the work that they've done for COVID projects. Yep. Um, but does the school have a list like this of projects the, they need? Yeah, we have we have lists. Yes, the school has lists. The school does five-year rolling lists and all that stuff. I think, I, again, I would suggest the board have sort of a pre-vetted list of wish lists and it or include the school, yeah. but these requests come in Spur of the moment with short lead time. Like, I'm going to a co committee meeting tomorrow. What would you like me to ask? Them? Yeah. Well, I, I, I highly support the first one, your top priority, the, 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 the limited use lift uh, for this building. It just, it, it's always the first thing that has to get done before we can do anything to this building mm -hmm. and do anything upstairs. Yep. Well, whatever it is. I just wanted you to know what I put in. So if you, if you get the money with these, you'll, you'll have an idea where they came from. It was that guy who was here for a few months back in the, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll name it after you. It's the guy. The guy. Okay. So that was sort of what I had intended for that um, COVID recovery fund agenda item was right. talking about where that money Great. was going. We'll, we'll be back to your 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 update momentarily, or you, you'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, all right. Are you, you going to go on to the second page of your report? or well, did, we uh, the, did we finish the first page? No, we didn't finish the new sure. one. No, no, yeah, the update, the still the update report, down here. Still new. But, but we were doing oh. that. Gotcha. So, so if this is done, yes. then... then uh, uh, items anticipated 48 hours in advance, not anticipated 48 hours in advance. 
have none. I have none. Yep. Town administrator update. Here we go. Um, at the request of the police department, I looked into accelerating the way they've been paid for detail work. If an officer does private detail outside of their normal duty, they get paid by the utility company or the contractor. The way it's been done here is they don't get paid until the town gets paid for that work, which means officers at times have been out money for six months. And I think that that's inappropriate and unfair and had looked into the town paying them at their next pay period and then getting reimbursed from the contract. Uh, Have any of these contractors ever gone belly up or absconded to Rio with the money before they have reimbursed all the none officers? Of it, none of us absconded with the money. It just usually gets caught up in their paperwork. The chief is very good at following through with them. Uh, the treasurer is very good at following through with them. So the town has really not been on the limb, you know, to front this. It just means fronting it. I looked in the state law, but the state law says you can have a revolving account, but you can't deficit spend right. Right. So the first time you use it, you're apt to be paying the officer before we've been reimbursed. You're automatically deficit spending. You can't do that. The way around it is for town meeting to appropriate something in a revolving account. I leave that for you and Bernie to consider what, doing that at the next town meeting. Were we to do that, what would be an amount that would be appropriate that would cover the average annual so we're six months, you're talking about a six-month gap, generally. Oh, I mean, we could check with Jan to see what the experience is, but I would think under 5000 yeah. we could not start that. Uh -huh. The town doesn't lose that money because it's right. reimbursed. Right. I think it's appropriate that officers be compensated close to the same pay period. I mean, uh -huh. the state is very specific that once you do get paid, the town, that is, they, we have to pay them in 10 days. It doesn't say how long Great. you to make them wait to the town to get it. It means the town's carrying that money, but I think it's very small for the town, but very significant for the officers. Yeah. It's actually the only fringe benefit our officers get, really, the way I look at it. I'm shocked that 5000 would be enough. I mean, that, that's really good news. Um, we could be more scientific yeah, and verify yeah, I, that. I see Veronique writing it down. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because the prevailing wage for that is what? Is that, that's like 40 or 45 an hour now? $50 an hour yeah. for detailed rate. And that's why 5000 town flow. Having well, the, the language ready for the next town meeting yeah. might be a good idea, especially if there's a chance there be a, a special town meeting in the fall. You could do it with that. Yeah. I think you could anyway. Um, speaking of Veronique, um, she and I are meeting regularly um, to start working the transition process. Uh, we had a discussion with Rory and IT today about how we can be sharing emails and, and, and processing emails together so that she'll see the, the lack of rhyme or reason with the way I process email, but at least we can do it together. And next, this Wednesday, yes, this Wednesday in this building, probably in this room, at 2 o'clock, we're going to have in the swearing-in ceremony for the new town administrator. Public's welcome. Public is welcome. Board members, town employees get to, get to see their new boss. Um, we will have some sort of refreshments, and I'm hoping everybody will keep their speeches very short. I will be Please. a little late. I had a meeting scheduled, but I have to for the um, two to two fifteen. But I'm gonna <laughs> I'll show up as soon as I can. This will be ours, but okay. great. I'll be down here as soon as I can. I liked how somebody told me it's nice that you're having a swearing-in ceremony because the sw ceremonies, all future ceremonies, will be more or less swearing at ceremonies. <laughs> yeah. um, I think Phil mentioned the playground project. I was down there last week and met with the uh, designer and the contractor. Uh, they seem to all be on the same page. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can't help that. Um, probably has this. Some of the equipment's already arrived. It's in the parking lot down there. Um, construction seems like it's going to start soon. It sounds like the people who do the construction are sort of roving from one project to the next, 
so they'll get here. They can. I mentioned the surplus playground equipment that might need a new home. Um, Festival of the Hills. I had a good meeting last week with representatives of that committee. I found out that they are actually are already 501C, um, so they, they're already set up and covered that hurdle. What they really want is support from the town, and that's as much marketing visibility support as it is money, that'd be more so. I mean, I think they need a lot of people to step forward and volunteer to be on their committee or to take charge of being chairperson for certain tasks. Uh, they've got 20 or something events. They could use 20 or something chair people. It's going to happen the fall of 2022. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of chance for them to get the work done at a leisurely pace, but to make this as spectacular as that. So I think if they just get some public service announcements from you folks saying there's openings available, that'll go a long way. We did look into getting them some funding. They want some funding to cover their sort of their basic costs for police details, porta potties, insurance, tolling. I'm thinking a couple grand to get them started. Would that be another revolving fund? I thought so. I checked with town council. He said there's actually an act that says you can't give public funds to charitable organizations. Unless you meet certain special two. conditions, which I believe... Two conditions. Two I, conditions. I believe this committee could meet those conditions. Absolutely. I asked him about the library, because I said, we gave $2,700 to the library, and he said that that law that says you can't do that specifically says, except for libraries. Libraries, oh. okay. We gave, we gave money to the Historical Society Museum, which is owned by a 501c3. We gave money to the church, which is not a 501c3, but if anything, to those concerned about government support of non-governmental agencies, that would be even more objectionable. But, if, but as long as those two criteria of it being a public purpose and it not advancing uh, the, the private non-secular interests of the organization... Then so it must be a permissible purpose. Yes. But obviously, not to give them something illegally. Um, it must assist the um, entity to provide a that provides a public good. That, you know, for the inhabitants of the municipality, and it must not make someone specifically rich at that society. Right. <laughs> so I think you could make a case that this yeah. applies. Yeah. The suggestion from town council that I will follow up with is to call the attorney general and present our case to see if we can do this. But the, the representatives that I met with said they want to stay an independent committee as a 501-3C. Uh, they prefer not to become a formal town committee. I explained to them there's some process and bureaucracy you have to do if you become a town committee. Uh -huh. um, so I think if they can meet their needs better by doing so if they Great. get visibility and support from all the boards and maybe some financial support, I think they'd be, be happy. I think that was the key thing that they really do need is that, that, that few thousand dollars a year to get the ball rolling because they left the town, they left town, whatever, the, when they were no longer a semi-official town body, they lost that five, they, they, that first year. They had to take what was always their operating expenses and put it and, and have that as their scholarship expense, whatever. So they lost that, that their margin. Yep. And they need their margin. Well, I, I think they, they seem to have all the wherewithal to do what they need. Um, they just need some visibility. I think, like a lot of places, they need committee members. Yeah. project members, people who can run certain events, and if you give them a little bit of air time once in a while, maybe that'll help jump up some excitement. Um, yeah. We've got nothing set yet for the agenda on July 5th. Let's push back a date. Actually, that is the Monday. Um, I was planning to work Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday that week. 
So, I, but I would be fine with keeping that meeting. If, if I would too. I think we could do that. We would have to come in and sign warrants. Is that we don't have to have a meeting to approve the warrant? Just our signature. And you could certainly take the vote afterwards to say we're retroactively approving the, the warrants you signed last week. I'm fine with that. I mean, if something comes up, we'll let you know. But we can, Louise and I can try to keep that agenda clear if you want to. So when the, when would the, well, our next meeting would be? Uh, the 4th or 18th, right? Is that 4th plus 14? Well, the 4th is a Sunday, right? The 4th was the... Yeah. 4th is a Sunday. So okay. Monday is, is a holiday. So I think the next meeting would be the 19th. Does that sound right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, then I get to say this is my last select board meeting. <laughs> you can come back as a member of the public, right? You can, you can Zoom. Yes, I can. <laughs> well, so I want to thank the board. It's, you've been a great pleasure to work with. We spoiled you. We spoiled you. No, you because spoiled us. You spoiled us, and we spoiled you because because when if you know this is like your this is like you, now, now you're an interim person and you'll be able to market. But but this is it's it's downhill from here, like for you, because it's Conway. It's just well, it's how, how can hard you do better? How can you do better? Um, this is a great community. I love it out here. Um, I wish I'd had more time actually, but you're a great board, and you've got. A very good town administrator taking over, and uh, I wish we were quite nervous about how to find someone who could help us get through town meeting and through the budget process. We hit the jackpot. Yeah, and we did. You made it look easy. Well, you're a really good fit. You're a really good fit in this. I, I, I people have come up to me and remarked well, about how impressed they are. Welcome the opportunity to continue to help Conway and to help Renee any way that makes sense for the. For the four of you. Well, we've talked about uh, we we sort of not talk talk, but we've um, we want something like we we're gonna have to work that out. We're gonna have to talk about money, about money yeah. and sort of context and all that structure, <laughs> structure. Well, um, I want to see Conway continue to flourish, and I want to see Bernie succeed. So if well, I can help. When we so when July 5th you, might be a good time to do that. Hmm? So July 5th, I mean, do, don't we want to talk with him before he leaves? Well, well <laughs> I'm available electronically. Yeah, yeah that's true. But <laughs> early when you were interviewed with us, you talked about one about having commitments in the middle of July, but possibly coming back at the end of July. Um, and... To, to me, the issue is, do we have funds to pay you for another week at the end of July? I think we do. And, and if we do, I, I, you know, I think we would be very happy to authorize you if you'd be willing to come back for a few more days and see how it's going and look, look at all the problems that have come up <laughs> after you well, leave. I would offer that maybe you want to check with Renee in the middle of the month and say... <laughs> If she's, ha she's comfortable or wants help, whatever whatever works for you. Right. I would be thrilled to well, uh, one way or the other, especially since I promise I won't call you when you're on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But, but I don't imagine that it'll be that quick that you'll get another posting somewhere and and be busy, you know, intensely busy. Uh, I don't know that, but but before that happens, it might be great if you could come back and and see how it's going. I'll be glad to come back. Just let me know what you have in mind, and we can work something out. I just never, could I also suggest that if we find a pot of money, that maybe we could have a retainer? So yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. But I really need Ross for that. Yeah. yeah. On-demand <laughs> consultancy. <laughs> Whatever works for Conway. Thank you. And thank you for having me out here. It's been great. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you, Ross. Thanks for everything. Motion to adjourn. And our next meeting being July 19th. July 19th, 6 p.m. Here. Here. Uh -huh. Same method as we're doing now. Yep. 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 I vote aye.
Great. Okay. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.